Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Andy and in today's video we're going to look at creating box plots with matplotlib. But first we have to understand what a box plot actually is. A box plot is a graphical and standardized way to display the distribution of data using five key numbers. The median, the 25th percentile, 75th percentile and the minimum and maximum values. To construct a box plot, we take the median value or the 50th percentile of our data. And then we draw a box from the 25th to the 75th percentile. And this is our interquartile range. And from the edges of the box, we draw lines to the top and bottom. And these extend to 1.5 times the interquartile range or to the last data point if it is less than this value. Any points that fall outside of these endpoints are considered outliers or anomalous data points. And we will be looking at outlier detection in a future video. So we can use box plots in a number of ways. As mentioned, we can identify outliers from them. We can also identify the range and spread of our data. And we can determine if that data distribution is skewed. In the following Jupyter Notebook section, we're going to see how to create box plots using the Volve data from the Norwegian North Sea. And we're going to take it one step further where we're going to create a figure with multiple box plots using their subplots. This allows us to display multiple columns from the data frame even if they have different data ranges. So let's hop on over to our Jupyter Notebook and see how we do this. Now that we're in our Jupyter Notebook, the first few steps we will carry out is loading in the libraries and our data. We will be using Pandas, Matplotlib and Lasio. Lasio is a library that you may not be familiar with, but it is used to load log ASCII standard files or LAS files, which are commonly used within the oil and gas industry for storing and transferring well log data. You can check out my first YouTube video which explains how to use this library. Next, we will load in and view our data. We can do this using lasio.read and passing in a relative path as a text string. I've appended .df to the end of this in order to convert it to a pandas data frame. When we call the data frame, we can see that we have a table representing the first five and last five rows of the data. Each column represents a logging measurement and going from left to right, we have AC for acoustic compressional slowness, Kali for borehole caliper, DEN for bulk density, GR for gamma ray, NEU for neutron, and RDEP and RMED for deep and medium resistivity. Don't worry too much if you're not familiar with this data, as the techniques I am going to show you can be applied to most data sets. Also within the data frame view, you can see that we have a number of NAN or NAN values, which are missing data. We can drop these out of the data frame simply by calling upon df.dropNA and then adding in place is equal to true. And that will remove the NAN values from our data frame. Now that our data has been loaded, we can generate our very first box plot. And we can do this by typing df and then in square brackets and then passing in gr, which is one of the columns within the data frame. And we then follow this by adding dot plot. And in the arguments, we set the kind is equal to box. And this tells the function that we want a box plot. When we run this cell, we get a very basic looking box plot. We have the interquartile range box, which contains a median line and extending from either side of that box are the whiskers which extend to 1.5 times the interquartile range. And then at the top we have a series of circles which represents the outliers within this particular data. We can look at another curve, in this case RDEP, repeating the same code as above. We can see that we have a tiny box down the bottom of our plot and a large number of outliers above that. From experience and prior knowledge our depth is usually plotted on a logarithmic scale and can range from lows of around 0.1 ohmmeters to around 2 to 3000 ohmmeters and even more than that. To solve this we can switch the y axis to a logarithmic scale by adding plt.semilogy and you will see here that we are now using matplotlib notation and that is because pandas is calling upon matplotlib to build this box plot. If we find that we prefer to have our box plots horizontal, we can add an avert argument, which is used to tell the plot to appear vertical or horizontal. By default, it is set to true. And if we set this to false and then run the cell, we will end up with a horizontal box plot like this one. Now the above code has been done using the pandas wrapper around matplotlib. We can generate the same plot using matplotlib syntax as follows. First, we call plt and then add dot box plot to it. And then within the arguments, we then pass in the x argument, which is df, open square brackets, and then gr. And we will also set the vert as equal to false so that we still have a horizontal plot. And when we generate this plot, we can see that there are very little differences between this and the one above. 
The main difference being the colour of the box and the median line within the inner quartile range box. As you can see, the, the Matplotlib box plots are not very stylish and the code is very low level, which is why there have been a number of libraries such as the Seaborn library uh, that has been developed based on Matplotlib to allow more customization. And they bring in so much more to make the visualizations more appealing. And we will cover Seaborn plots in a future video. But for this video, we will see how we can make some basic modifications using Matplotlib. First, we will add some color to our plot by changing the color of the outlier circles. And to do this, we create a new variable called red underscore circle. And then we create a dictionary for that. And within this dictionary, we can have the marker face color and the marker, which is the marker shape. We will set these to red and to a circle respectively. We will then call upon our matplotlib code that we used above, plt.boxplot, and then we will pass in the AC column from the data frame. As another argument, we will pass in the flyer props, and that is our outlier properties, and we will pass in the red circle dictionary object. When we run this cell, we now have some color to highlight our outliers a bit better compared to our previous plot. So on the current box plot, we have the median value represented by this orange line. We can add on the mean of our data by creating another dictionary variable called mean underscore shape. And we set up the same parameters as we did before using the face color and the marker. And we will set these to green and a diamond respectively. And to represent a diamond, we pass in the capital D. If we want to change the edge color, we can add in the marker edge color argument. And by default, it is set to black, but here we will set it to green. And then we will copy our plt.boxplot uh, function from above and we just add in the parameters for the mean. And also we need to type in an argument called show means is equal to true. And then we have our box plot with our mean and our median values on it. And this just gives us a better representation of our statistical properties. So instead of representing the median as a line, we can also represent it by using a notch in the box instead. And we can do this simply by adding in the argument notch. And this can be another useful way to identify the median, and some people prefer this to just having a line. And here we have our final box plot with our notch uh, representing the median, and we've switched the data over to the density column from the data frame. There may be occasions where we want to see multiple columns from the data frame represented in a box plot. And we can view all columns on a box plot simply by calling df.plot and then passing in kind is equal to box and then run it. And this will generate a plot with all of our columns, but as you can see, it's not very appealing. Also, all of our measurements are in different measurement ranges. GR can range from 0 to 2 to 300, whereas DEN typically ranges from about 1.5 grams per cc to 3. And this can make it very difficult to read and identify outliers within our data. So to resolve this and make a figure that is readable and usable, we need to use subplots. If you want to find out more about subplots in matplotlib, then you can check out my previous video on my channel. First, we will start by defining our outliers as red underscore circle that we've used before, and we will also set the marker edge color to white. We then define the fig and AXS or axes as plt.subplots. In the arguments, we pass in that we want one row, and then we pass in the number of columns, which will be equal to the length of df.columns. And that will give us a number for the number of columns. Finally, we will set the fig size to 20 by 10. We then need to create a small for loop, which will loop over each of our plot axes. With it, we are using the enumerate function here to keep track of our value i, which is our index value. And next, we can add our box plot by calling ax.boxplot and passing in df.ilock, which allows us to get columns by that index value that we've set. We do this by creating the square brackets with a colon followed by a comma. And this tells the ilock function to get all rows from the data frame for the columns that we're specifying. And then we pass in the column index as the second part of this argument. Next, we pass in our flyer props, which is our red circle to denote our outliers. And the next couple of lines allows us to set the title to be the name of the column from the data frame. We will also set the font weight to bold. And then we're going to change the Y tick label font size up to 14. And this allows it to be more readable. 
At the end, we can call upon plt.typeLayout to space out our plots uh, much more nicely. And when we run this cell, we have a much nicer looking plot that we can read. Each subplot has its own y-axis, and we can see that Kali, GR, and NEU all have a large number of outliers. However, the final two subplots, our med and our dep, should be scaled logarithmically. To catch these, we can simply add in an if statement to check the column names if they are equal to our dep and our med. So when we run this, this plot looks much better now and we can see each of our columns on the correct scale. And there we have it, we have seen how to create box plots using pandas and matplotlib. And we've also seen how to create a figure containing multiple box plots, but each with their own independent scale. Don't click off this video just yet. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to click that like button down below. And if you want to be updated when more videos are released on this channel, be sure to click on that subscribe button and that notification bell. If you want to see other videos on Matplotlib and plotting different types of plots, then be sure to check out these videos here. So thanks for watching, and until next time, bye for now.